study in Lent. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we have, have sinned against you in, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what, what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. The Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Psalm 95 Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us, let us come, come before, before his presence with thanksgiving. thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him of the songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his, in his hand, hand are the caverns of the earth, and, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, Come let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Hearken, hearken not your hearts as your, as your forebears did in the wilderness, at Meribah, and, and on the day of Massa, when they tempted me. me. They put me to the test though they had seen my works. For years, I detested, I detested that generation and said, said this, this people are wayward in their hearts, they, they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to and the, the Son, Son, and, and to, to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it as was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. 
They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The, water, the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out to Egypt? to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst. So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strop the right rock, and the water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The first song of Isaiah, Isaiah 12, verses 2 through 6. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and, and to, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely we Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son. Much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Capital 14, a song of penitence, prayer of Manasseh. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, 
God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring. You made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me, you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life, for all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tried, tied out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered him, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well? and with his sons and his flocks drank from it. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep company here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You were right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I can see you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me. The hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, where the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. 
for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was talking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to him, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more and then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told them everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. But we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May the words of the, my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord my rock, and my redeemer. Good morning. My voice sounds lost in the emptiness of your absence. It is quite strange to sit here talking to you, yet unable to see you. But these are strange times, are they not? Situations and decisions are changing seemingly at the speed of light. As soon as I read one thing on my phone, another thing pops up to grab my attention. As presiding Bishop Curry said earlier this week, the next 30 to 60 days at least, are simply going to be unlike anything we have experienced in recent history, including even 9-11. The dilemma of what we know and what we don't know will continue to complicate our decision-making and our lives. Perhaps you feel, as I do, anxious, Anxious as we try to prepare to confront something we can neither see nor hear. A somberness pervades our day-to-day -day life. 
And in a way, it seems to me that if we must go through this season of self-imposed exile from the beloved community that is St. Peter's, that it is appropriate that we go through it during Lent. Bishop Mark wrote, our journey together through the season of Lent gives us a unique lens in which to address the challenge of the COVID-19 outbreak. It is a time of self-sacrifice and exploration so that we might open ourselves to God's presence in our lives and new and wondrous ways. We are an independent people, don't you agree? We tend to have an I can do it myself sort of spirit. Yet here we find ourselves needing, needing to depend on one another as we make plans for childcare, figure out how to quarantine ourselves if need be, and yet still provide for the needs of our families. We need one another. We cannot do this alone. On 365 occasions, as recorded in the New Testament, Jesus said, fear not to his followers. He wasn't telling them not to be concerned, but rather he was encouraging them, just as he encourages us. Be brave, be courageous, not frantic. Yes, use good sense. Sing the alphabet song as you wash your hands. Live into the moment. But let the Holy Spirit guide you in caring for yourself and those around you. I believe the current situation which the COVID-19 virus presents us gives us an opportunity to live more fully into our baptismal covenant, to support one another, to more deeply love our neighbors as we love ourselves. The need to be physically distant from one another necessitates us to more intentionally reach out to one another, to check in with one another, especially of those who are the most vulnerable of our community. Those of us who are out and about can offer to pick up prescriptions, food, and other necessities for those who are confined indoors. Pick up some aluminum pans, if you will, put together some casseroles and freeze them. The need might arise. Friday morning, I awoke at 4.15. My mind was spinning with so many thoughts and self-imposed list of things I needed to do. Make more hand sanitizer, go buy more dog biscuits, make another grocery run, though not for toilet paper and paper towels. Sleep having escaped me, I went downstairs and sat in the early morning darkness, wondering what was going to happen next. But as I sat there and prayed, I slowly began to hear the faint chirps of birds, and my eye caught the first light of dawn. My mind turned from anxiety to gladness and gratefulness for the beauty of God's creation. And I was reminded that Christ is ever present. Fear not. God's beautiful world is all around us. And he is indeed present. Christ is present in our suffering, in our anxiety, and in our fears. Be of good courage. We are passing through difficult and uncertain times, but we are only passing through it, not to be forever mired in it. Know that Christ is with you. 
God loves you is the apple of his eye and will hide you under the shadow of his wing. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the, the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Colic of the Day. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both inwardly in our bodies and outwardly in our souls, Amen. that we may be defended from all adversity which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
now invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings. Amen. Amen. 